three companies, three revolutionary technologies. One brutal deadline, 2026. SpaceX is perfecting Starship through explosive test after explosive test. Stokes Space just raised $510 million to build fully reusable from day one. Relativity is 3D printing entire rockets. But here's what matters. Whose engineering philosophy actually works when billions are on the line and 2026 is months away? Let's talk about what's actually happening at Cape Canaveral right now, because the construction tells a story most people are missing. SpaceX built their reusability advantage over 15 years. Falcon 9 exploded four times before succeeding. Starship is now on its seventh iteration, with billions spent perfecting the belly flop maneuver and heat shield tiles. That's Elon's approach. Build fast, test hard, Break things, learn, repeat. Stoke Space is taking the opposite bet. They're engineering Nova to be 100% reusable from Flight 1, not Iteration 10. No expendable second stages. No, we'll figure out full reusability later. Their heat shield technology is designed to survive re-entry without replacement. That's not iteration. That's precision engineering. Then there's Relativity Space with Terran R. They're 3D printing the entire rocket structure, including the Aeon R engines. While SpaceX hand assembles Raptor engines over weeks, Relativity can print major components in days. Different philosophy entirely. Manufacture faster than your competitors can test. Here's what matters. All three companies believe reusability is the future, but they're solving completely different engineering problems to get there. SpaceX asks, how do we make it work? Stoke asks, how do we make it work perfectly? Relativity asks, how do we make it faster than anyone else? Which approach wins when the clock runs out in 2026? Let me show you something fascinating about these Cape Canaveral construction sites, because engineers leave clues everywhere. At Launch Complex 14, Stokes' propellant pipework is already installed. That's not speculation. That's finished plumbing for liquid oxygen and rocket-grade kerosene. Their water deluge system has been tested successfully. The horizontal integration facility stands complete with doors open. This isn't a company hoping their design works. This is a company confident enough to build permanent infrastructure before their first launch. Think about what that means. You don't install propellant systems unless you know exactly what pressures, flow rates, and temperatures your rocket needs. Stoke has clearly moved past the let's see if this works phase into the let's prepare for operations phase. Walk next door to Launch Complex 16, and you'll see something even more revealing. Relativity is building a 93-meter water tower, taller than a 25-story building. That single structure tells you they've already calculated the exact thrust levels of Terran R's engines, the heat flux at ignition, and the water volume needed to protect the pad. They've also installed six massive LOX tanks, each holding 170,000 gallons. That's over 1 million gallons of total oxygen storage capacity. Nobody builds million-dollar infrastructure on guesses. These are design lock decisions. But here's where it gets interesting. Stokes' infrastructure looks launch-ready now, with an early 2026 target. Relativities still welding their water tower, targeting late 2026. That six-month gap isn't about funding or ambition. It's about engineering confidence. Stoke believes their Nova design is mature enough for operations in months. Relativity is giving themselves extra time for ground testing. The question isn't who's moving faster. The question is who's being realistic about their technology readiness level. Now let's talk about what makes these rockets actually different, because this is where the engineering war gets serious. Nova's breakthrough is in the heat shield. Every reusable rocket faces the same problem. 
Reentry temperatures hit 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. SpaceX uses thousands of individual ceramic tiles on Starship, which means thousands of potential failure points. Stoke developed a different solution they claim won't need tile replacement between flights. If that's true, it changes the entire economics of reusability. No refurbishment time, no inspection delays, just fuel and fly. Their landing system is different, too. Instead of SpaceX's aggressive flip maneuver, Nova uses a controlled descent architecture designed for precision. Think about what that enables. Landing accuracy within meters, not the football field-sized zone Falcon 9 needs. For customers wanting specific orbital slots, that precision matters. Terranor's innovation is subtler but potentially more disruptive. Their 3D-printed Aeon-R engines can be manufactured in a fraction of the time traditional engines require. SpaceX needs weeks to build each Raptor engine. Relativity claims they can print major engine components in days. The implications are massive if they can iterate engine designs faster. Then competitors can schedule test campaigns. They can optimize performance while others are still waiting for hardware. Both rockets use methane fuel, just like Starship. That's not coincidence. It's strategic. Methane is cleaner burning than kerosene, easier to produce on Mars if you're thinking long term, and there's existing infrastructure at Cape Canaveral from SpaceX's operations. Stoke and Relativity get to leverage billions in ground support development they didn't pay for. But here's the critical detail everyone's missing. These companies studied Falcon 9's 400-plus successful landings and Starship's public test program. They're not inventing reusability from scratch. They're starting from SpaceX's complete playbook, then optimizing for different use cases. Nova is smaller and more precise. Terran R is faster to manufacture and partially reusable for economic balance. SpaceX had to invent reusability. Stoke and Relativity get to perfect it. The real question, does knowledge equal execution? Let's ground this in reality, because timelines in the space industry are notoriously elastic. For Stoke to launch in early 2026, we're talking Q1 or Q2, Nova has to be essentially complete right now. Full assembly, ground testing, systems integration. Their $510 million funding round in October 2025 was specifically tied to completing LC-14 activation and reaching first flight. Investors conducted technical due diligence. They saw actual hardware, not PowerPoint presentations. The visible construction pace supports an aggressive timeline. Propellant systems don't get installed unless you have a rocket ready to use them. Ground teams don't test deluge systems unless launch operations are imminent. Everything at LC-14 suggests Stoke is tracking toward their announced target. Relativity has a different equation. Their late 2026 window means they're planning for a full year of ground testing before flight. The water tower completion is scheduled for January 2025. The horizontal integration facility is about 60% complete. Terran R itself is likely still in final assembly at their Long Beach manufacturing facility. But here's what matters. Both companies have committed to 2026 launches with investors watching every milestone. These aren't Elon's famous aspirational timelines. These are contractual deadlines with funding tied to performance. What happens if hardware doesn't perform as modeled? If the FAA licensing process drags? If Florida weather creates months of delays? The space industry is littered with companies that had perfect engineering on paper and failed in reality. Yet, the infrastructure investment suggests serious confidence. You don't spend 50-plus million dollars on a launch pad if you think your rocket might not work. That money is permanent sunk cost. The fact that both Stoke and Relativity are building production-scale facilities, not test stands, tells you their engineering teams believe the technology is ready. 
but belief and reality aren't the same thing. Here's where this technology race intersects with business reality, and where Elon Musk's position gets complicated. SpaceX currently owns the reusable launch market. Falcon 9 has flown over 400 times. No competitor has successfully landed an orbital-class booster except SpaceX. That monopoly generates billions in annual revenue, money that funds Starship development, Starlink deployment, and eventually Mars missions. But monopolies only exist until they don't. Nova and Terran R are targeting market segments where Falcon 9 is either oversized or overpriced. Small satellite constellations don't need Falcon 9's 22,800 kilogram lift capacity. They need precise orbital insertion at lower cost. That's Nova's sweet spot. Medium lift commercial missions currently pay Falcon 9 prices because there's no alternative. Terran R could undercut that by 30 to 40 percent if their manufacturing speed delivers the promised economics. SpaceX's vulnerability is structural. Falcon 9 was designed in the 2010s for a different market. Starship is being optimized for Mars, not Earth orbit commercial missions. There's a gap in SpaceX's lineup, and Stoke and Relativity are explicitly building rockets to fill it. The parallel to Tesla is unavoidable. When legacy automakers announced electric vehicles, people laughed. Tesla has a decade head start, they said. Nobody can catch Elon. But today, Tesla's market share is shrinking as VW, Ford, and GM deliver credible EVs. Not because Tesla got worse, because competition improved. If Stoke or Relativity successfully lands a reusable rocket in 2026, the industry narrative shifts instantly. SpaceX's reusability is no longer unique. It becomes a commodity feature. Customers start asking for competitive bids. Government contracts require provider diversity. The market that SpaceX created becomes the market that SpaceX has to fight for. And here's the kicker. Elon's attention is split across Tesla, X, Neuralink, SpaceX, Starship, and now government efficiency projects. Stoke and Relativity have singular focus, beat SpaceX in reusable medium lift. That focus might matter more than experience when 2026 arrives. Technology competition drives innovation. If these challengers succeed, SpaceX will be forced to improve. If they fail, SpaceX's dominance extends another decade. Either way, the next 12 months will define the launch industry for the next 20 years. The innovation war isn't about who invented reusability. It's about who perfects it. Three different technologies, three different timelines. One space coast where the future of launch is being decided right now. SpaceX spent 15 years proving reusability works, Stoke Space is betting half a billion dollars they can do it better from day one. Relativity is manufacturing rockets faster than anyone thought possible. The innovation war isn't about Elon Musk versus startups. It's about whether operational experience beats fresh engineering, whether iteration beats precision, whether speed beats perfection. 2026 will answer those questions. If Stoke lands Nova successfully, full reusability becomes the standard, not the exception. If Relativity's 3D printing delivers operational rockets at scale, manufacturing timelines collapse across the industry. If both succeed while Starship is still in testing, the narrative shifts permanently. But here's what actually matters. Competition makes everyone better. SpaceX created this market. Now they have to defend it. That pressure drives innovation we all benefit from. Will 2026 be the year SpaceX's monopoly ends? Or will it be the year two ambitious competitors learn exactly how hard Elon's job really is? If this breakdown gave you new perspective on the technology race happening right now at Cape Canaveral, hit that like button. Subscribe to New Space Review for technical analysis you won't find anywhere else, and drop your prediction in the comments. Stoke, 
Relativity, or SpaceX, who wins the innovation war? Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.